Hi everyone, how are you? My name is Adaku. I'm the owner of Dovetailed. Dovetailed is an online fabric shop. I sell African wax print fabric. I sell sewing patterns that I design. I've now recently started selling sewing kits and I also sell haberdashery items, just some of those essential sewing items that you'll need to complete some of your projects. Really excited today to come on and show you how to make this gorgeous skirt. So this skirt is actually one of my patterns. My first ever pattern, the Alfia skirt. It's really simple and really easy to sew. I will be showing you in a minute the items that you'll need to make this project. For those of you who are more experienced, you could probably make it in under an hour. Um, if you're new to sewing, um, you may not be able to make it that quickly, but you'll certainly be able to finish it in an afternoon or perhaps an evening after work. It's really easy, uh, really versatile. I've been wearing um, this skirt pretty much every day. <laughs> I have it in quite a few different fabrics and I've been wearing them pretty much daily over the last couple of weeks. They're great to match with some of your um, block tops or um, tops that are either all black or all white. And yes, so they're a great pattern. This is a great pattern to sew with. Um, perfect if you're a beginner. And I look forward to showing you how to make this skirt. So if you'd like to see how to make this skirt, keep watching. So the items you will need to make this project, this skirt, are your pattern, you will need um, two yards of African wax print fabric. Um, I call this fabric, she studied at St. Martin's. Um, it is available on the Dovetailed website, as is the sewing pattern. You will need, um, as I said, two yards of the fabric if you're sewing for sizes 8 to 18, UK sizes 8 to 18, and you're not pattern matching. If you are pattern matching or you're sewing for sizes 20 to 20 to 26, then I would go for three yards of fabric. Um, you will also need a matching um, top stitch thread. Um, this is slightly darker than sort of the brown on these um, flowers, but it is a pretty, it's pretty much a perfect match for these um, little sort of dark brown details dotted around this cream fabric. So I've gone for the darker one. It's always advisable if you have, as it were, a choice of colours, generally to go for the darker colour um, of all the colours that are on your particular fabric. Um, you will need a seam gauge. You will need um, elastic. I sell this elastic um, by the metre. You will need um, as much for your um, waist circumference, so that's the measurement around your waist, minus um, two inches. So for example, if your waist is uh, 30 inches, you will minus two to make it 28, and then cut 28 inches um, worth of elastic. You will need your paper scissors, because um, you will be using tracing paper, I'll come on to that a little later. You'll also need your fabric scissors, some pins, your um, safety pin, you will need some chalk, small scissors for snipping away those um, loose threads as well as your tracing wheel. I don't know if I've mentioned carbon paper but you will also need some carbon paper. All right, um, so I'll now move on to the next step of what you do um, when you first get your pattern. So when you first get your pattern, um, you will see on the back you have um, fabric amounts, fabric suggestions, the number of pattern pieces, how to measure the elastic for your waist, size chart, as well as finished garment measurements. You will open it up, excuse nails, <laughs> okay. and inside will be, put that to one side, 
your pattern instructions and your pattern. It's printed on quite good quality paper. Sorry, excuse the noise. I um, always suggest that people don't actually cut into this, tempting though it, it would be. Um, instead, get some tracing paper. Um, you can buy tracing paper online. You can buy it from many online shops. It will either come as a roll or you can buy it in a pack similar to the carbon paper that I showed you. Um, or you can use grease proof paper. I was using that right at the beginning of my sewing days. Um, so yes, as long as you can see through it, that's fine. And what you will do is you will lay your tracing paper on top and using a pen or a pencil, literally um, copy the line so if for example you are a size 12 you will find size 12 is marked with orange lines you'll find size 12 and literally take a pen or paper and just draw a ruler is good I should have mentioned that right at the beginning a ruler or um, what are they called pattern French seam, it's called a, sorry, a French curve is what it's called. They're also quite handy, but you might be able to do this sort of freehand or with a ruler. Certainly these are straight lines here in any event. So you will trace that onto your um, tracing paper. Um, you will also want to transfer onto your tracing paper kind of essential pieces of information um, for example, these notches. So there's a notch here. This is your waist notch. And there's also a notch here. Two notches here for your pocket. There are lengthening and shortening lines that allow you to do just that. So if you wanted to lengthen or shorten, you would cut. You would first of all trace your um, pattern you would then um, once you had your traced piece you would then cut along these lines separate to make longer or bring closer together to make shorter get sticky tape to stick down those cut pieces together and then retrace so that does take a bit longer but if that's something you wanted to do you can this fold edge indicates that you will place your um, fabric on the fold at this line and I will show you that in more detail so, so um, here I have my own um, pattern pieces they are well used. <laughs> I've made many versions of this skirt. And so what you will do is take your fabric. Remember that it's, it's, it's on the fold. So you will move that out of the way. Fold this. I've already washed and pressed it. Remember that you're folding right side to right side. The right side of the fabric is where the writing can be read very clearly. So you will fold, fold those sides together. Okay. 
and so the wrong side should be facing you the wrong side is the side where the selvage can't be read very clearly it's gorgeous okay so now I'm just going to bring this fabric together in this way. So I hope you can see I've got one fold here, right side to right side. Here's one fold. When we talk about place on the fold, this is the fold of your fabric. And here, another two layers. Here is your other fold. So I've literally just lay I've literally just laid those um, folds together. All right, and then I can take my skirt piece. My instructions are folded edge, cut two on fold. Do you see? So here's one, here's two that I'm cutting on the fold, and I'm going to do that now. Now I'm going to take my scissors and cut. Using your carbon paper, right, lay your carbon paper right side down on top of your fabric and sandwich your carbon paper between your pattern piece and the fabric, making sure that the line you are about to trace, in my case I'll be tracing size 12, making sure that that line will transfer onto your um, fabric. Another thing you can do, um, if needed, it's not, necessary, it's not necessary I don't think in this case, and it's a bit fiddly, but you can, if you have a really large piece of, car of carbon paper as I do here, you can effectively tuck it under the other side so that you can um, trace two sides at once. So pin and then you'll use your tracing wheel to trace. So test a bit and you'll see, I don't know how well you can see that, it's already beginning to transfer. Just 
just keep going here is your first pocket notch I like to make an X and then I continue down the size 12 line when I get to my second pocket notch I do another X this remember this is the wrong side of the fabric so it's okay the side that you won't see when you're wearing it all the way down it's gone off slightly there that's fine all right and all the way to the bottom again just have a sneak peek make sure it's transferred which it has the only other um, transfer is this waist notch here but we can use um, scissors to just make a snip very very small insertion just here tiniest of snips like that just to indicate that that is where that pocket notch is all right and now we can remove this tracing paper sorry now we can remove the carbon paper put it to one side I'm now going to cut at the hem and now that I've cut at the hem and I've marked my waist notch and I have used carbon paper to transfer this um, side seam as well as the pocket notches onto the fabric I can now remove the pins what I like to do is um, keep the actual fabric pinned together but I can remove the skirt pattern piece we'll come on to the um, pocket piece in a moment Again, you can put that to one side here are your carbon marked lines and we will literally just cut down that blue line remember we have these X's as I've made them for my pocket notches I've cut there I can just make another small insertion here again another small snip and off we go all the way down to the hem these lines were not the neatest doesn't matter at all once it's sewn it won't matter that's lovely okay so those are your skirt pieces cut and I will now um, move on to the pocket piece so the skirt we cut two on the fold the pocket we will cut four and actually if I line this here I have my four don't I got to be a little bit careful because you don't always have as much as you think and what I will do is I will use this side as my gauge again this is right side to right side I've got that times four so I will very quickly take some pins pin here pin here
Again, look out for the notches no need to um, trace anything it's quite a small piece but I, I find myself <laughs> using more pins for the pocket than I do for the actual skirt just because you want to cut as accurately as you can and cutting around a curve can sometimes be slightly fiddly all right so we start cutting, good. Okay. Then we cut down the side seam. Again, we've got notches here. I might just remove this pin to make snipping this slightly easier. Again, slight snip, that's it. I'll remove this one as well. Again, just so I can snip this one. Isn't this uh, pin cushion just great? So it's a magnetic pin cushion. It's made by Prim, it's part of their Love range. Again, I sell this on the website. Um, I also have another one, it's, it's, a, it's I think about £12, um, that it, it was always a more expensive version because it really is quite quite cute. Um, I do have um, another one as well, another type. I can't remember if it's prim or not, but it's a bit cheaper. I think it's about £6 or so. Um, so if that's something that you're looking for, um, have a look. They are great and um, they work really well. So if, for example, I remove that pin, takes it up really quickly. It's a really powerful magnet. Okay, so I have gone ahead and overlocked um, all of the raw edges. That would be your next step. Your next step would be to overlock all of the raw edges of your pocket pieces and your skirt front and back pieces. Um, what I like to do, because once you've cut away the selvage, it's no longer possible sometimes to tell the wrong side of the fabric sorry from the right side of the fabric and there's a couple of things you can do one thing you can do is take chalk so chalk like this or any other kind of chalk and just sort of mark lines on the wrong side so that when you are coming to so you can immediately tell the wrong side from the right side that's a way of doing it another way of doing it which i personally prefer is to take a pin a pin like this and um, these are called glass head pins and the pin head insert the pin so that the pin head is on the right side of the fabric and then the other side which doesn't have the pin head visible is the wrong side. That's also another great way of doing it. Um, so I have overlocked all of my pocket pieces, the raw edges of all four, and I have also overlocked the skirt front and back. So this is the front of the well, front or back because both the front and the back are identical. So I have overlocked the side seams. Hope you can see that side seams and the hem and I've done that for the front and the back okay so now we're going to start to uh, begin constructing our skirt on our machine so you will take your um, pocket pieces and um, again right side to right side so we know this is the right side of the skirt because the pin is there and we know this is the right side of the pocket because the pin is there and so you'll line up effectively the straight edge 
of the pocket piece. You will look for your notches. There's a notch and there'll also be a notch up here and you'll line that up with the equivalent notches on the skirt itself. That lines up at about there because this area here roughly is where you will fold your waistband. So I'll get some pins. and begin pinning. All right. You'll then repeat that with the other side of um, this skirt front and then do the same with the skirt back. You will um, make a seam that starts roughly one inch above the beginning of this pocket piece and ends roughly one inch below. Um, roughly the seam will be no more, the stitch allowance will be no more than about a quarter of an inch all the way down to simply attach the pocket piece to the front skirt and back. And I'll go and sew that now. So I'll, I'll just use um, one of the skirt pieces to demonstrate. So I have attached the um, pocket pieces to the skirt front. Um, the heads of my pins are all facing upward. So this is the right side. And if I turn over, this is the wrong side. All right, now what we'll do is, a skirt, is attach the skirt front to the skirt back. Move some threads. And we shall, um, we will attach the skirt and the skirt front and back together at the side seams, which are here and here. So if I just explain how that's done, you will literally line them up Again, right side to right side. All right. We know this is the right side because of the pin. And again, this is the right side here. And um, taking some pins, we will pin beginning here. And now we're going to use a one centimeter seam allowance. We'll begin here, stitch all the way to here. Stop, perhaps just a half an inch under the top of these pocket pieces. Stitch across that seam, down. Let me, I'm off the page now. Off the page, off the screen. So I'll just start that again. We'll start from the top, stitch down here, stop, come across here, down, around the pocket bag, and up across the seam again, and then all the way down to the bottom of the skirt. All right, I'll go and sew that now and come back. Okay, so we have sewn our skirt front and back together and now we're going to um, cut sort of um, notches. Um, we call them wedges as well, but they are very similar to um, the um, small triangles that are often shown on pattern pieces as um, notches. We're going to cut a similar sort of shape out of the curve. We do that on curves, you see. Anywhere there's a sort of an outward facing curve that has been sewn, you do that um, just to sort of add a, a bit of ease um, into the item, into that part of the garment. So effectively it looks, it's effectively a, a small triangle. And then out it comes. Take care not to cut into the stitch line that you have just made. Uh, 
Um, this can be done really with the tip of the blade, just like this. And again, And you'll just continue that along the curve. So now um, we will do that on the other pocket. Once that's done, we then um, turn to our waist area. And what we will do is we will um, fold, using our seam gauge, we will find the quarter of an inch point and use that point to measure a quarter of an inch fold and we'll do that the whole way round the waist circumference and pin in place and once we've done that the whole way round we'll then turn this hem under this hem this waistband under again so that I'm, this is on the wrong side of the fabric you're turning it to the wrong side because the, it will look neat on the right side. And I mean, I like to make this quite generous because through this channel, you will thread your elastic. Your elastic's um, an inch. It can be, you, know, you can, um, some people use two inches of elastic. It doesn't necessarily matter the width of the elastic, but however, however wide your elastic is, sort of just give yourself an extra little bit. So I like to measure maybe one inch and a quarter or one inch and an eighth minimum, just so there's plenty of room to feed through your um, elastic. All right, and then you'll pin again all the way around and then stitch. Um, once you um, begin stitching, remember to leave a sort of a two inch gap. So leave a two inch gap, so don't completely close that channel because through that two inch gap, you will thread your elastic. So I'll just um, go over that again. Fold under one quarter of an inch. Really, this is just to seal this raw edge. Then fold under again, roughly, if you're using a one inch elastic, one inch wide elastic, I'd say an inch and an eighth or an inch and a quarter, just to give yourself an extra bit of room. You'll stitch um, from the right side of the fabric 
um, so not from this side but from this side you'll stitch making sure that you're catching that seam allowance forgive me making sure that you're catching um, that folded edge and then um, make sure you leave a two inch gap through which you will thread your elastic so I'm going to go and do that on my machine now um, I'll use my iron to press this down so it's nice and neat and then I'll stitch and come back and show you how to thread the elastic so I've now sewn the channel for the elastic um, as you can see I um, turned under a quarter of an inch before turning under again to the wrong side about an inch and a quarter I then um, stitched from the right side approximately an inch and an eighth again just not losing too much of that extra um, amount that we gave ourselves just to allow this process um, to be slightly easier than it otherwise would be. You don't want to force through one inch wide elastic through a one inch wide canal. Um, it's not channel, sorry. Um, it's not the end of the world, but this just makes it a little bit easier. So you take your elastic and your safety pin, pin it through. Um, this is roughly two inches, this gap that I've left here, and you will begin to just thread this through. All right. Be careful not to um, be careful not to twist the elastic as it's going through. You might find that when you come to the seams, it's a little bit tricky <laughs> to find the opening. But just take your time. You'll do this until you come back through the other side. Uh, feel free to sort of snip any loose ends as you go. Alternatively, um, you can leave it until the end. And you'll see that your skirt is beginning to gather. You can always, I always like to sometimes just hold on to this other end of the elastic so that I don't lose it completely. All right, so you might just want to take the other end quickly and just use the safety pin just to keep them together while you evenly distribute your elastic um, throughout 
this waistband channel you will want to before finishing that just to take both pieces um, both ends sorry of the elastic making sure they're not twisted and stitch them together what I like to do is to stitch these um, two ends of the elastic together using a zigzag stitch so I'm going to go and do that now and then come back and show you how it looks so I have um, sewn both ends of the elastic together using um, a few rows of zigzag stitching um, I said a row really you can do as many as three or four just to reinforce that area and then you are ready to complete evenly distributing the gathers at the waist area of your skirt okay that looks okay and then again from the top side you will, the right side, you will just continue this stitching line to close that two inch gap. So I have closed that two inch gap in the waistband. I'm just snipping off any loose threads all right so now um, you are ready to um, finish your skirt by making a very simple hem um, I will make the hem by turning under just make sure I'm in the middle of the screen um, turning under the um, bottom of the skirt I mean really because I've overlocked the raw edge I can do this once normally I don't overlock the hem um, as I had earlier with this skirt and what I would do then is turn under the hem to the wrong side half an inch turn under half an inch again and then make a one centimeter um, stitch line from the right side of the hem to close the hem however as I've overlocked um, this raw edge already and neatened it already all I will do is turn under the hem by half an inch again you will use your seam gauge to measure half an inch simply turn it under use pins to hold in place and then from the right side make a stitch line that is one centimeter um, wide to close the hem so I'll go and do that and then come back and show you what I've done well thank you so much for watching that's the skirt all finished hope you enjoyed that tutorial um, if you have any questions at all just let me know remember that you can buy the pattern the fabric um, the elastic the thread um, all available from the dovetailed website thanks so much for watching and i'll see you next time so there is your completed skirt i really hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you next time take care bye